Gaming is one of two passions in my life. And the other one is rooting for my local football team, which is Vorderinga. Yeah. <laughs> and by rooting for my team and doing volunteer work for the supporters club, I've seen firsthand what most of you might already know. And that is that organized sports can be a real positive influence on local communities and childhoods. And in Norway, almost every kid has been part of some sort of organization that lets them do their hobbies. It's not all sports. It can be anything from uh, drawing to theater or dancing. But organized sports has been a huge part of this. And this is a good thing, because organized sports is about more than just exercise. These organizations make sure that there is an adult present. They teach them stuff, like how to work hard to achieve something. They teach them values like solidarity. And they teach acceptable behavior, like sportsmanship. And to some of these kids, those that might otherwise feel a little bit left behind, it can also be somewhere to call a home, somewhere to belong. And because so many of the children in Norway are part of organizations like this, it actually becomes a defining factor in how whole generations turn out. So having these kids in these organizations, learning these values, is a good thing. Not just for them, but for us as a society. But there is a problem. The number of kids being a part of an organization like this, in organized sports, it has flatlined and it's going slightly down. And because we're becoming more and more people in this country, that means that the number of kids not participating is increasing. And because having these kids in these organizations, learning about well, these values is a good thing. We want more of this, not less. And even if you take a closer look at this, you know, it's just a slight increase, you will see that when they become teenagers, there's a huge dropout. So, not only are there fewer participating, but they are also quitting earlier. Now, why is this happening? Why is participation declining? There are probably a lot of different reasons for this. But one of them is computer games or gaming. And that puts me in sort of an awkward situation. There's a tension between my two passions, right? Gaming and football. Now, in the world of gaming and on the internet, there are almost no adults present. Even though as much as 96% of all the boys and 76% of all the girls between the ages 9 and 16 are playing games. They play everything from cell phone games to Super Mario to eSports, you know? Organized competitions between teams and, and players. But there are almost no adults present, and even fewer of them understand any of it. And there are almost no organizations either. And those that are there, we know very little about them. We don't know if they teach these values. And if they do, we don't know if they're any good at it. And we suspect that they're not. And this makes us, as a society, worried. We see these kids isolate themselves. We see them sleep all day. We see them stop being physically active. They stop being social. And if you try to talk to them about it or suggest they might do something else for a change, they might even get hostile or aggressive. You've probably all heard a story like that or seen it. This is a story told a hundred times because this 
is the stigma of being a gamer. So what would you see if you took a closer look? Would you see anything else than dark rooms and energy drinks and junk food? You would most definitely see that. But you might also see a couple of aspects that are similar to the world of sports. You would probably see people working hard to do something difficult that required skill. You would probably see teams working together as a group to achieve something. And some might even also find new friends on the internet. And there are probably some competitions being played and trophies being won. But if you really made an effort, you would also notice a couple of things that are missing. You would see a world that's almost totally unorganized, with fragmented way of communications. And to outsiders, this looks like chaos, real chaos. You would find a world where it's much easier to get bullied or alienated from a group. And what about that one guy that wants to be good at something, but sucks, right? Will there be anyone there teaching him, like a coach? There probably wouldn't. Now, organized sports isn't perfect either. Like any large group of people, there will be problems. There are problems with bad attitudes, toxicity, and even racism. But the difference is that there's a system in place to deal with this. They handle it when it happens. And those systems might not be as present in the online world of gaming. And this is exactly the reason why we tell these kids to get out of their basement and go do sports, whatever, just do something else. Because we want them exposed to these systems. We want the systems to teach them these values. Because having these kids in these organizations, learning these values is a good thing for them and our society. But we're not really succeeding. We don't really understand them. Most adults don't, don't understand why they do it or what they do. And as a general rule, what you don't understand, you either ignore or fear. So you end up stigmatizing them instead, pushing them further away. So while we might complain about these kids going down to their basement, we're also closing the door behind them preventing them from coming back up. So we should tr probably try something else. We should choose to act otherwise. And I truly believe that how we respond to situations like this, it says something about us as human beings and as a society. Now, what if we stopped trying to drag them out of their basements and into these systems? What if we took the systems to them and made gaming and esports a better place? What if we made sure that when they spoke passionately about their hobbies, they were met with curiosity and understanding instead of a stigma? What would that do to them? And why does that matter to us? Think about it. If you if someone told you that you are something negative, right? Matching the stigma. This is you. Would you like that person if they said what you love doing has no value? And how many people do you need telling you this before you start thinking that it's everyone thinking this about you? Would you be open or would you isolate yourself if everything Everyone was like that. And how long do you need to be isolated before you become something negative or toxic or even destructive? Now, try and picture the opposite. That you have a hobby, that you're happy with it, and that your friends and family are encouraging you. And if you want to be better at it or do it more, you can go to a coach will train you. 
And if you do something impressive, you might even get credit for it. Maybe people would share you. Wouldn't that make you a lot more likely to do something positive in return? This is about more than just a practical thing. It's not really about how to organize someone or something. It's not about what kind of systems do we need here and there. This is about making a place for someone to belong. This is about us as a society deciding who gets to be on the inside and who gets left outside. And the people on the inside, they can be valuable to us and close to us. But the people on the outside, they are the potential friends and allies we wasted. And sometimes they're at risk of becoming something more destructive as well. So maybe the problem isn't just them. Maybe it's us and how we as a society treat them. And we really have an opportunity to do something positive here. And knowing what we now know, shouldn't we make sure that everyone gets invited inside? 